Hello, and welcome to your Need to Know for April 10, coming to you from Meadow Mill. I'm Amanda, this is Alan. You can join us here every Tuesday at 12.30 for your weekly news roundup and a discussion of current events. Feel free to comment and ask us questions in the field below. Alan, let's start close to home. I mean, yeah. really close to home in my case. <laughs> this and, is disturbing. And yeah, and morbid. Yes. Uh, two men were found dead in an Towson apartment. Uh, police say a maintenance worker called 911 early Monday uh, after entering a fifth floor apartment at the 20 Lamborn apartment complex in Towson and made a gruesome discovery. Corporal Sean Vinson of the Baltimore County Police Department said two adult males had been identified as suffering trauma to their bodies. Police hadn't yet determined who rented the apartment or who was on the lease or whether the victims actually lived in the building. No one reported hearing gunshots or police are uh, sorry people arguing in the in the unit if you have inf any information which could help in this case you're asked to call the Baltimore County Police Department yeah wow. i mean they could be maimed in other ways it didn't necessarily have to be a gunshot mhm mm but um that is just where our it's minds go instantly. So, yes, that's curious and curious, sir. Yep. So, on to some more gruesome attacks. Yep. Uh, well, Israel has been at accused of attacking a Syrian military base and killing 14. Russia has made that accusation. Two unnamed U.S. officials reportedly confirmed that it was Israel that carried out the attack. The strikes came less than two days after a chemical weapons attack in the rebel-held Syrian town of Douma, for which both the U.S. and France threatened to retaliate. At least 40 people have died in the chemical weapons attack. NBC quoted U the U.S. officials as saying that Israel had carried out the attack and that Washington had been notified in advance. Mm -hmm. After Russia accused Israel, Syrian state media quoted the military saying that it was Israeli F-15 warplanes that had carry out, carried out the attacks. Israel has neither confirmed nor denied involvement in the attack, which is usually their policy. Yeah, that's what they do. Moscow reportedly has called on Israel to clarify its involvement. Okay. <laughs> Good luck with they that, They want some Moscow. clarification there. <laughs> if you're just joining us, this is Jay Moore's Need to Know on Facebook Live. Share, like, and follow at hashtag Jay Moore Need to Know. So this one is a real gem. Yeah, a weird story. Um, <laughs> Clarence Thomas's wife says that Jews, quote, gave up their firearms to Hitler. Right. Okay. The wife of the Supreme Court Justice shared a Facebook post blaming the Holocaust in part on gun control and attacking survivors of the Park Parkland, Florida high school shooting. Virginia Thomas's post registered strong disagreement with gun control while criticizing the survivors of the shooting that killed 17 students and faculty members. Quote, to all the kids that were walked out of school to protest guns, said one post, which featured a photograph of a pile of shoes of Holocaust victims, these are the shoes of Jews that gave up their firearms to Hitler. They were led into gas chambers, murdered, and buried in mass graves. Pick up a history book, and you'll realize what happens when you give up freedoms and when you have them. Um, and why you have them, sorry. I think Mrs. Thomas needs to pick up a history book, but I think we maybe we're supposed to be thankful that she's not a Holocaust denier. Yeah. I mean, she clearly understands that Sunday wear a pile of shoes belonging to some mm -hmm. victims. Um, but I think historians have actually refuted. It's a common, it's a common refrain or, or common claim mm -hmm. among, um, among gun, gun control. Rights, gun rights activists, Jewish and non-Jewish, that the Holocaust could have been stopped if gun control... Uh, well, or if if there were more guns in uh, the Nazi Germany and the countries that Nazi Germany invaded, right? But it, it has actually been set, stated that been um, they would have been outnumbered yeah. no matter what. Well, regardless. You, you got tanks. And <laughs> There's other things there <laughs> killing people. <laughs> major weaponry and point a gun at that. What are you going to do? Yeah. So right. uh, a lot of so, so nice try, lady. She sounds lovely. So mm -hmm. speaking of teachable moments, uh, another Holocaust related story of funding for Holocaust education. A bipartisan slate of ho House members is set to introduce a bill that would grant money to Holocaust education in American schools. The Never Again Education Act would establish a Holocaust education assistance program fund in the U.S. Treasury. A 12-member board would disperse the money to schools. A draft of the bill, which is to be introduced today in the House of Representatives, does not designate how much money should go to the fund, but it says the fund will accept private donations. Representative Carolyn Maloney, a Democrat from New York, is the lead sponsor of the measure. Maloney will launch the bill at the Olga Lengiel Institute for Holocaust Studies and Human Rights in New York City, accompanied by representatives of Hadassah, B'nai Brith International, and the Association of Holocaust Organizations. 
So that's good news. Uh, we just talked a couple of weeks ago about the guy in Kentucky who wanted Holocaust education. Right. So great. Right. And speaking of Holocaust education. Yes. Uh, Yom HaShoah, Holocaust Remembrance Day, begins tomorrow at sundown. The annual observance commemorates the lives and heroism of all the people who died in the Holocaust between 1933 and 1945. Conservative estimates say that by the year 2020, the number of Jewish survivors in the United States will sit at a roughly 67,000. By the way, documenta documentarian Rich Polt helps families preserve these legacies and encourages anyone who knows a Holocaust survivor to invite them to have a con conversation with them. Yeah, and so Rich Polt um, mentioned that 67,000 number, but he, he, needs, he wants to reiterate that a lot of them were under the age of three or right. maybe three ish, which means they don't remember. They don't have Correct. those memories. Um, so the number is actually really a lot lower than 67,000. He also provided us with uh, 10 questions to ask a Holocaust survivor that will help frame the discussion. So how about we run through those? Sure. And of course you can find that on our uh, website as well. Absolutely. Uh, on Rich's blog. Uh, question number one, what was your family life like before the Holocaust? Two, how did life change when Nazis came to power or invaded your country? Three, did your family try to immigrate in the 1930s? If so, tell the story. If not, why? Four, how did you cope emotionally with your day-to-day -day Holocaust experiences in the ghetto, camp, or other place that you lived? Five, how did the Holocaust influence your faith? Six, did you encounter Nazis, Germans, or other people who tried to help you? Seven, were you with your family throughout the Holocaust, or were you separated? Eight, how did you start your life again after the Holocaust? Nine, did your Holocaust experience change your view of humanity? If so, how? If not, why? And ten, why is it important to record the stories and learn the lessons of the Holocaust? And, you know, I've met a lot of uh, Holocaust survivors over the years. Some of them uh, really, at some point in their life, wanted to talk about what they went through to their families, to the community at large. And uh, they're very brave people. Um, other people prefer keeping their stories to themselves. You know, my mother-in-law uh, escaped Nazi Germany with her father and went through a lot, came to this country. Um, but she wasn't one of those people who wanted to talk about it constantly. She wanted to create a new life. And she had her memories and her tragedies, but she considered, considered that personal. Huh. But there are people out there who want to talk about it. Yeah. So uh, I think Rich is uh, performing a great service by doing this. Yeah, I really like that we have it. I'm glad we have it up on the site. Um, yeah, I think it's a great tool. I wish I had a survivor I could sit down and uh, ask these questions of. Um, so definitely go check out the questions and uh, get someone to tell their story so that we can always remember it. So we're going to switch gears a little bit. Okay. A lot bit, I guess. <laughs> to Mr. Mark Zuckerberg <laughs> on Capitol Hill, who's getting a lot of attention. Yes, And he's he not is. wearing his T-shirt right he's now. He's in a suit today. <laughs> yep. I, I think I saw that somewhere. Mm -hmm. Zuckerberg will spend the next two days answering lawmakers' questions about Facebook and whether the company is doing enough to protect users' privacy. Not enough. <laughs> not doing enough. Mm. Asked and answered. <laughs> Done. Uh, it's the first time that Mr. Zuckerberg will personally sit for questions from Congress instead of sending a deputy. His testimony marks a pivotal moment for Facebook and the tech industry. It's really going to be interesting to see how things play I, out. I am curious. I'd like to be watching this live, actually. According to CNN Tech, he'll be appearing at a joint hearing conducted by the Senate Judiciary and Commerce Committees today, starting at 2.15 p.m. Mm. The Facebook CEO will then testify in front of the House Energy and Commerce Committee tomorrow, beginning at 10 a.m. The hearings were scheduled to address Facebook's use and protection of user data in the wake of the Cambridge Analytica scandal. Which I believe has affected hundreds of millions, is that yeah. right? A lot of folks. Lots and yeah, lots of it's, people. It's scary. And we I, don't even know everything yet. No, we don't know everything yet. Um, and you should be getting a notice. I think Facebook is sending out notices if you were affected, but I feel like they just should just tell everyone that they were affected and then maybe send a note to the five who weren't. Right. And like say, oh, by the way, you got lucky. You right. won the lottery. <laughs> you did not get affected. I'm. How have I not been affected yet? I'm sure they know. They got me. Those Russians, they <laughs> know everything about me i've been Messy. i've been on their on their radar for years all right so anyway let's not ramble uh let's do the j word of the day okay well the j word of the day is a yiddish one it's bren, bren. what does it mean it means someone with a lot of energy and optimism like <laughs> like kyle kyle is our bren <laughs> um so usage of it would be she's such a go-getter she's a real bren 
I want to be a Bren without the optimism. Mm. I want to be a real go-getter with a lot of pessimism. Okay. Well, so I'm that kind of Bren. You might be that kind of Bren. <laughs> I think if- I am that kind of Bren. <laughs> we'll look into it. <laughs> yeah. Let me know what you think. Tell us if I'm that kind of Bren. So remember <laughs> to join us here Tuesdays at 1230 for your Need to Know News Roundup. Tune in Facebook Live to join the conversation. Don't forget to comment, like, share, and follow at hashtag jmorenedtoknow and go to jmorliving.com for more news updates. Remember to commemorate... Uh, Holocaust Remembrance yeah, Day. Mm-hmm. Did you say you knew about? Yes, uh, here in Baltimore, there's uh, an observance. I believe it's tomorrow night, uh, and it's going to uh, feature. Uh, uh, it's a concert, so oh, it's okay. a little bit different this year. So, oh, Verity's Requiem, right? Right. Yeah. Correct. Right. 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 H- Handel. Isn't it? Uh, I don't. Something. Well, it's going to have a concert, and <laughs> you're going to commemorate, and we're going to move on. Right. <laughs> we'll see you next week. <laughs> Bye. Have a good one.